there's like 300,000 books about purpose, you know, <laughs> like 300,000 books on Amazon, all about purpose. You know, well, a lot of guys come to me and they're like, I don't know what my purpose in life is and I don't know what I should be doing. And, and I usually say, start with your pain. Start with the thing that feels really hard for you to look at. And in the process of doing that, you will show yourself physically, emotionally, and psychologically that you are capable of doing the hard thing that you didn't think you were able to do before. Mm. And that, that level of psychological competence is so valuable in our life as men. You know, when a lot of guys say, I don't feel confident, that's what they're actually saying is I don't feel competent enough or capable enough to face my inner dialogue, my inner critic, the fact that I beat the shit out of myself constantly. You know, they're afraid of these parts that live within them and they, they don't really want to face them. They aren't willing to face them. And for me, those are the things that in my life fundamentally held me back. You know, I had honestly the worst inner dialogue. I was more abusive to myself internally than anybody had ever been to me externally. And so I had to reconcile with the fact that there was this part of me that was very vicious and hostile. And I do this exercise at, at men's weekends where I'll, I'll get two men to sit across from each other. I'll get all the men at the men's weekend to sit across from each other. And I'll say, write down what your inner dialogue sounds like, your inner critic, when it's being the harshest with you. And then once they're all done, I'll say, okay, the one of you is going to go first and you're going to speak to that other man from that inner dialogue from wow. that inner critic and the resistance that most men have is so like visceral right they're like i don't want to talk to that guy like <laughs> that like he doesn't deserve it he's a good guy i love him you know it's like <laughs> yeah. i've actually, i've come to get to know him like i don't i don't want to i don't want to hurt him like that i would that. never speak to i would never else. speak to somebody yeah. else like that and it's like but the truth that most men are living is that they are living in a kind of prison internally, one where the guards, the inner critic, are violent, you know, where they are literally violent towards themselves. Like psychological abuse to yeah. themselves. And, and a lot of it's because, again, we don't have this culture of being with men in a way where our anger is acceptable, you know, where we can understand that there's sometimes value in anger, right? David White famous poet, I yeah. think you know him, he said that anger is the is the deepest form of care. And, and, to, and you need access to it. And you need access That's to it, That's what changes right? the world. So, you know, I think... And ourselves. I think part of this is that we, there's kind of like a reclamation process that men need to turn towards masculinity and turn towards healing and what that might look like for them and go on a journey of asking themselves what that means to them, you know, what masculinity is for them and and how they can express that within their lives versus seeing it as the, you know, the James Cameron notion of that's the thing that needs to be extracted and killed off within, within you and, and inside right. of you. Because which is just more of the compartmentalizing, more of the imprisoning. Yes. You know, which, which is again, the problem yeah. because it's like, well, if the world's not going to welcome you, you know, perceptionally mm -hmm. men's groups can that are based on actually being places. I think AA really modeled, like was maybe one of the first places uh, that really said, okay, well, everyone has the right to tell their story and actually not just the right, we need you to tell it. Yeah. And that's part of the healing. Like I remember going to AA with uh, a good friend of mine and I was like, this is like TED Talks. Like it was so <laughs> inspiring. <laughs> it was actually pretty funny because my friend was like, okay, listen, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to bring someone today, but come and, they're going to ask you, they might ask you if you want to share. Mm. And your answer has to be, I'm just here to listen. Uh -huh. And I was like, yeah, I got this. Like, I was made <laughs> to be an actor. And then I was sitting there, and like, there's a hundred people in the crowd. And the guy looks over at me like, hey, do you want to share? And I was like, uh, like, look around, like, who, me? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, I'm just here to listen. <laughs> It was the worst. <laughs> and my friend was like, you're awful. You said you had that. Anyways, it, I found it to be such a powerful and potent. I hadn't actually heard men yeah. express pain yeah. on that level and a group of both men and women mm. be just like, we love you so much. Mm. Like, you're safe here. And I think of the initiatory process. I can't remember. Is it the Maasai? People, 
I can't remember, but where they actually take, I think it's at 13, and they take and they paint the, I think it's the boys, but maybe Mm -hmm. boys and girls. They paint them black, Mm -hmm. and then they're to be ignored that day in the tribe. Yeah. And then... They're they're given a new name. Yeah, afterwards, yeah. And they are they're now men. Yeah, I think it is just boys. I can't remember though. But in it, what was fascinating is that now what comes with the initiation, the contained initiation, where I can't remember the other parts of it, is I now have a responsibility. I'm no longer a boy. I now have a yes. responsibility to the tribe that, and to the people, to the collective. Yeah. Yeah, and I think you're you know you're dead on in saying that. That is missing. Most of our fathers haven't been through contained initiations. I mean, Francis Weller talks about how we live in an immature culture, like an adolescent culture, yeah. which is very true. Yeah. And maybe that's why we, you know, you know, we eradicated or attempted as colonizing people to eradicate indigenous ways, mm-hmm. which was very much about initiation and reverence for plants and and the salmon and Mm. all that kind of stuff. It all seems to come back to the same. It's like the colonizing of ourselves, you Mm. know? 